Hi, Barefootuna here. Welcome to the channel. Back for Blood video. These are the best cards to unlock first and which supply lines to complete first. Let's get to it. To start off, look right above me. You see Reflex, Discipline, Brawn, Fortune. These are the four types of cards. I forgot to explain this before I made the rest of the video. So you might see some of the cards that I'm going to unlock literally right after this section. But to start off, I wanted to talk about the types of cards really quick. There's the blue ones, Reflex. These deal with your reload speed, your movement speed. So basically your character's agility. The red cards, Discipline. This is like ammo capacity, some accuracy, and, a, and some explosive capabilities as well. Like explosive damage and stuff like that too. Brawn, the green ones, these are with, these involve your survivability. So more health, trauma, dealing with trauma, healing from the trauma, and also effectiveness, effectiveness, effectiveness of items. And then fortune, the yellow cards. These are sort of with copper and other miscellaneous abilities here and there, and also kind of inventory slots so here we are with an account that has not unlocked anything i have played the game so i do have 1320 supply points but i have not unlocked anything other than the standard first little track where you get like three to five cards but then you're here at the supply line so here so the top row is more like offensive grenades that kind of stuff ammo the clinic the middle one is more about healing items, support items. And Crow's Nest is more about stamina. Let's start here. So this is what I think you should do. Paul's Alley. You definitely want to end up at this grenade pouch card here. Definitely a good card you want to get right away. So I would say go through this supply line to get to this card. So let's do that, right? The grenade pouch. Grenade pouch. Why? Because grenades are super useful against the special infected, the mutations, the specials. You throw a grenade at them, it's probably going to knock them out in one hit. Very good if you can carry more grenades. So that wasn't even that much. It was about, what, 200 or something to get to it? Then I would say in the clinic, you definitely want the second card, durable. So I would definitely get durable. Because trauma resistance. So... The big thing about this game when it comes to health is the trauma system, which I'll just explain super very quick. When you take damage, if you don't heal the damage fast enough, it turns into trauma damage. That's where your health has like the dashes in it. And that health you cannot recover back from med kits or bandages or when you heal off the wall. Unless you like take pain pills first to make the health blue and then you can use a health kit. So that's the trauma system. So trauma, trauma, trauma. That is why you go down, you die so easily. It's the trauma damage. So having this card, durable, 50% trauma resistance, very, very helpful. So until you get used to the trauma system, until you get used to conserving your health, healing yourself efficiently, this card is going to help you so, so much. So then once you're actually here, I would just complete this supply line just to get it finished so that you can unlock more supply lines now that gives me access to another line the stilts so from here crow's nest is based on stamina which i think if you're kind of playing unless you're kind of doing melee a lot you don't really need stamina so much you shouldn't really be running so much because you need to try to stay with your team so crow's nest and the stamina cards, I would kind of hold off a little bit and complete these other ones, these other lines instead. So then from here, you want to complete another line. And here you can kind of, it's up to you. If you want to do the stilts or the clinic. If you go the stilts, it's because you're going to try to get to this 100 point card. Offensive scavenger. You can sense nearby offensive accessories. Because this pairs well with the grenade card, so you can find more offensive items. So either go this route or finish off the clinic. 
because in the clinic you do have this card inspiring sacrifice team effects when you or a teammate becomes incapacitated bleh, rewind bleh, incapacitated all teammates heal for 25 health over 20 seconds this is good if you're constantly going down because when you go down you actually kind of heal everyone else kind of heals so it's, it's useful for the team right so kind of depending if you go down a lot maybe go this route if you want to go the grenade grenade route do the stilts obviously i had like a thousand points so i can probably finish both off but let's say i'm gonna go the stilts okay Finish that off right there. Get some khakis. Okay, so Fort Hope is unlocked. So again, you want to complete another line. I'm still kind of holding off on Crow's Nest. So if you go through Fort Hope, the $100, $100, the 100 point card is Avenge the Fallen. Offense, team effects. When you or a teammate becomes incapacitated, all teammates gain 30% damage, 20% reload speed, and unlimited ammo for 10 seconds so again this is a card that helps the team when somebody goes down so right here again either finish off the clinic you're going to get kind of a similar card when somebody goes down it helps the team either go for the ammo and the damage or the health on this one here right i'm going to do fort hope Navy Tartan body piece, baby. So if you went the top route, you're going to be at Paul's Alley 2. I'm going to go keep going through here. I'm going to pick this again because so you get double grenade pouch again. More grenades if you're going to do the grenade route. So let's just do that. And then this card right here down in front while crouching, you neither take nor deal friendly fire damage. Super, super, super helpful for veteran and nightmare modes where friendly fire happens a lot it's really hard to coordinate so if friendly fire is a big issue get this card okay okay so we're here now and obviously i had a thousand supply points when i started unlocking stuff so from here it's either sort of finish off this line and get to the next one i'm not really gonna have points anyway it kind of really depends on which supply lines which cards you're trying to get to first so for me, based on the route that I have taken up to this point, I would st stick to the top. But we're going to finish this off. And that is because... So 100. Let me add this right here. The 2 is 1 and 1 is none. Very good card. It lets you have two primary weapons. Very, very good card to have if you want to run that play style. You can combine it with some other cards coming up later on. And I'll show you why. So Paul's alley is completed. And that's why they're prepared for anything. So in this line. I only have 40 supply points left now, right? But so then we're here in this set of cards right here. They're all very good to have spiky bits, offense, 25% melee damage, plus 10 damage resistance while using melee weapons. The negative is you lose ammo, but if you're sticking to melee, very good card to have. Silver bullets. This is this is if you are going to use a gun, specifically more like a sniper. If you're going to stay back with an LMG or something, an AR. 10% bullet damage, 150% bullet penetration. That means, that means, so when you shoot a bullet, it goes through the first zombie, goes through the second zombie. And the third, I think it, I think three is the most. I'm not entirely sure, but point is, it keeps bullet damage, so you're able to mow down large groups more efficiently. The downside is yes, when you kill a mutation, you lose five copper, but that's only for the specials. It seems like a pretty good trade-off, right? So the good card if you're going to stick to just to, sh to just shooting as much ammo as you can. Steady aim. Okay, this is basically your quick scope card. 80% aim speed, which is ADS speed. Very good if you're trying to quick scope with snipers, with the ARs, or the rifles, or if, with the shotgun too, if you just want to pop real quick, you know. 
this card right here admin reload okay when you stow your weapon it reloads so when you swap weapons your primary secondary it reloads the weapon if you combine this with the previous card that was in this route the two is one whatever the, the card that gives you two primary weapons deadly combination basically shoot one gun empty the clip swap weapons empty the other clip swap weapons empty the other clip you never have to like reload yourself right very good card to have but then and then this card right here money grubbers utility each time your team loots copper you gain five additional copper stacking up to 100 additional copper so this is a very good card because you're constantly looting copper i believe this card only applies to the holder the person who activated it it's not a team effect so only you will get copper but extra copper is so good because you combine it with all these other cards you can buy more grenades buy more items and you will just be able to fend off against the specials the mutations so much better and then obviously extra copper can go a long way to help you buy the team upgrades and yeah so i just think this path is helps you more than the other ones the top row of supply lines deal more damage get through the axe quicker replay replay you know the clinic is more for defense crow's nest for stamina cards and this and that if you're trying to speed run maybe on recruit that might help you a little bit more but ultimately i feel like if you're trying to just play the game as it's meant to be played and you're not specifically farming stick into the top row i think it's kind of the way to go okay and so then once you have some of these cards you can make a couple of decks i'll just show a couple decks i made right here and sort of the first five cards i put in each one so melee okay obviously you might already have some of these copper scavenger always good to start off with if no one else if you don't really have anything else to put there durable again i would use durable if you can then if you want to melee put some melee cards like battle lust melee melee kills heal, heal two health it's a good card to have if you're going to keep to melee vitamins for more health Avenge the Fallen, because I guess I didn't really have anything at this point. But stuff like that. Uh, Grenade. A grenade deck. Okay, as I was talking about the grenade deck. Okay, again, Copper Scavenger. Durable. Grenade Pouch. Combine that with Offensive Scavenger. Incense nearby. Offensive accessories more. Combat Knife, because at some point you should put the Combat Knife in there somewhere. Kind of, again, Avenge the Fallen. I made this Shotgun deck. Again, started with Durable. Mag Coupler. 50% reload speed. Disables aim down sights. That's why it's a shotgun deck. Ammo for all. Ammo for you. Ammo for everyone else. Might as well. Shell Carrier. I'm not even sure how I got this one. I think you... If you find cards in the campaign and purchase them, I think it unlocks. But I have this one. 30% shotgun ammo capacity. 10% damage with shotguns. Combat training. 5% bullet damage. 50% bullet penetration. Again, Avenge the Fallen for that extra, for that extra, that extra kick of ammo and damage when somebody gets knocked. So there you go. So that's kind of what I did. I think that's a pretty good start. Those are the decks I made. Let me know if you made these decks. Maybe my decks are not good at all. Maybe you made better ones to start with, with the same points. Let me know in the comments. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff for more gaming tips and tutorials. Let's wrap this up. Thank you for watching. Barefoot Tuna signing out.